The second way you can define your backend logic is through an ASP.NET MVC app created with Visual Studio. The ASP.NET approach defines your service using ASP.NET MVC with the model view controller style. Each endpoint has a controller which works with defined models, all defined in a .NET supported language, such as C Sharp. The server backend model is type safe and can use all the extensions and customizations available to .NET. The web project is just a standard Visual Studio solution. This model does require some additional setup work, and most features require a code change instead of just flipping a switch in the portal like you can do with Node.js. It's important to recognize that either backend approach is valid. Ultimately, they will produce exactly the same endpoint. Choosing one model over the other is really just a preference of how you want to manage it, in the portal or in your version control system. If you decide to use a .NET backend, then your starting point isn't going to be the portal, but will instead be Visual Studio. The first step is to make sure that you have the Azure SDK tools installed in Visual Studio. We briefly looked at this in the Azure 101 class. You can get these from the Visual Studio installer in some cases, or you can download them from the Azure download site shown here on the screen. There's a version for Visual Studio 2015, Visual Studio 2013, .NET Core, and even the next version of Visual Studio. The SDK is installed using the web platform installer, and once it's present, Visual Studio will prompt you to update the components when updates are shipped. This SDK is primarily intended for the server-side work, and it adds several things to Visual Studio. It was going to add the assemblies for Azure APIs. It will add some project and item templates for Azure features. It will add support for remote debugging Azure services, along with emulators for the storage APIs to do offline testing. And finally, it will add the Server Explorer support for Azure services. Developing the Azure Mobile Service backend with Visual Studio is almost exactly like developing an ASP.NET MVC or Web API solution. In fact, you can use the same tools, languages, runtimes, NuGet packages that you already create your server-side code in, including .NET Core. The primary difference is that Azure will manage the integration, the authentication, and the web endpoints on your behalf. When you leverage the SDK tooling, you won't have to deal with any of that. Instead, you'll be able to focus directly on the logic and the data that's being exposed. Once the SDK is installed, you'll have a new project template available from the ASP.NET Web Application Wizard. You'll create a new web application, and then from the wizard, select Azure Mobile App. On the right side, you'll find a checkbox, which lets you create the app in Azure while you create the service code. That's really useful if you haven't already defined the service in the portal. If you have created the service in the portal, though, you will want to uncheck that option. When you tell Visual Studio to also create the application with Azure, it'll prompt you with a dialog that looks a lot like the portal blade that you filled out for the Node.js version. Most of the same information is collected here. The wizard also adds a web deployment publishing record, also known as MS Deploy or Web Deploy, to the solution. The files are stored in the properties folder, and that generates a unique deployment username and password for you. You can also publish from the command line using the MS Deploy command line tool. The publishing profile is saved as part of your Visual Studio project, but you can also reset it and download a new version from the app portal. This generates a new username and password, and it invalidates any existing profiles. You can then download the publishing profile. This also retrieves the FTP credentials if they're set up. Then you'll import that new profile into Visual Studio or use the information in it for command line publishing. One warning about that downloaded file, though. The passwords for the publishing process are all stored in clear text. Visual Studio will encrypt them when you import the file so that they, so that they aren't in clear text in your source control. Once you have created the app, Visual Studio will be loaded with a new solution that contains a single web server project. This is just a standard ASP.NET MVC app. The app defines two endpoints. There's tables slash to-do item which represents a database table of to-do items, and there's API slash values, which represents a simple web service that returns a string. These are implemented through two controllers that are included in the created project. To support the database table, the ASP.NET project also includes a data transfer object, or DTO, named to-do item. We'll look closer at this in the next section. Once you've created your server, it should be up and running once the dashboard is visible. You can verify this by typing or pasting the URL into a browser. A default page is displayed to indicate that this is a mobile app service.